All right, so what we have here is another quadratic type of application. Um, and so we're going to answer some questions about it. And the nice thing about this one is they gave us the quadratic function, which is, you know, awesome. We don't have to create it ourselves. So let's see. Toy rocket is fired into the air from the top of a barn. So here's my barn, and I'm firing this rocket into the air. So anytime you fire something into the air like this, it follows this uh, projectile path, parabolic path, which obviously works with the situation I have here because when I have a parabola, I get a quadratic, right? It's facing down and the leading coefficient is negative. So it corresponds to the function that's given to me, right? So I have this path, this parabolic path um, to represent this situation. Uh, its height above the ground is in yards after t seconds. So that's the function. t is in the place of x. h of t is in the place of y. t is in seconds. It's time. Um, so we remember what the variables represent. h of t is height above the ground um, in yards. So we want to know what that means. You know, we want to know what the variables represent. So let's see. <clears throat> what was, so for the first question, what was the maximum height of the rocket? Maximum height. So where's that? That's here. That's the, you know, the highest point on the parabola. That's here. So technically, that happens at the vertex, right? The maximum height represents the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we're, you know, we want to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, in other words. Um, which is basically, you know, h of t in this example. So um, let me write that for your notes. So in other words, we want the y-coordinate of the vertex. Um, now, in order to find the y-coordinate of the vertex when I have a quadratic in standard form like this, I need to first find the x-coordinate of the vertex because it's not in vertex form. So let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex, which in this case represents your t, um, but there's a little formula, negative b over 2a, that we use to find the x-coordinate of a vertex when um, we have a quadratic in standard form like we have here. So in this example, my b is 10, positive 10, so I have the opposite of 10 over 2 times a, which in this case is negative 5. So this works out nicely. So I get um, negative 10 over negative 10, which is equal to positive 1. Now remember that x represents time, 1 second in this case, right? t is in the place of x. So when I find the x-coordinate of the vertex, I am finding the time, the t, that it takes to reach that vertex. It takes one second from, you know, uh, where it started to reach it. Now, let's find our maximum height, which is our y-coordinate of the vertex. So let me write this for your notes. And if I want to find my y, I need to plug in my x, right? So if, in this case, if I want to find h of t, I'm plugging in my t. So h of 1 represents my maximum height based on this situation of my variables. So h of 1, negative 5 times 1 squared plus 10 times 1 plus 20. Simplify, I get negative 5 plus 10 plus 20, so that's a 30 minus 5. So 25 yards, yards? Yeah, yards. 25 yards is my maximum height. Okay, so not too difficult. You just have to decipher the situation, right? That's my maximum height. Um, so basically, question one was talking about the vertex. In one second, it takes one second to reach a maximum height of 25 yards. So what, uh, what are we doing for the second case? Um, uh, let's see. Um, how long, long was the rocket in the air before hitting the ground? If I want how long, I'm looking for t, right? How long before it hits the ground? So if I want t, right, t is like my x, I need to determine height. Well, I want t when the height is equal to, let's see, what? Well, if I'm on the ground, how high am I from the ground? h represents the height above the ground. So if I'm on the ground, what's the height? The height is zero. So we want to find the t, the time, when h is zero, when the height is zero. 
So how do I do that? How do I solve that? So um, negative 5t squared plus 10t um, plus 20 is equal to 0. And there we go. Quadratic equation pops up, which I want to solve. So I can solve it using multiple methods. I'm going to first, you know, see everything is divisible by 5. I'm going to divide by negative 5 to make that leading term positive because I like to factor and deal with positive leading, you know, squared terms. Everything's going to get divided by negative 5. So I'm going to write um, t squared. It's going to be minus 2t and then minus 4 is equal to 0. And so I initially would try to factor this, but it looks like it's not factorable because there's no factors of 4 that, that are going to add to 2 or negative 2. So that means that I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula. So t, right, is taking the place of x. So t is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So here, the opposite of b, the opposite of negative 2. So plus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which in this case is negative 2 squared, or 4 minus 4a is 1 times c is negative 4, all over 2a, 2 times 1. t equals, let's simplify, this is a 4 plus 16, square root of 20. Um, let me write that for you. 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 16, all over 2. Square root of 20 over 2. Now, I have to simplify the square root of 20, which is a 2 times the square root of 5. If you don't know how to simplify that, then you need to go back and refresh how to simplify radicals. I have a video on that if you need it. Um, everything is divisible by 2, so 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, these are my two solutions, yes, but, you know, 1 minus square root of 5 and 1 plus square root of 5. We want the actual value, so we're going to go ahead and plug it into our calculator um, to find that because we want the uh, we want the time. We want to know how long it is. I want it in a decimal form so I can, you know, see the length of time in seconds. So I have one minus the square root of five, which is approximately negative one point two five. And then on my calculator, I'm going to actually, if I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, negative one point two. Uh, sorry, 1.24. Um, and then my other time, 1 plus the square root of 5 is approximately 3.24 seconds. So I have two solutions. Now, you know, what do they represent? They represent a length of time since the rocket hits the ground, and I have a negative value, right? Um, one of my times is negative. So you know, does that make sense for my situation, negative 1.24? That deals with the situation here where, you know, it kind of goes back, where if it were touching the ground backwards. So that's why it's kind of a negative time. But that's not the one that I want. I want to know how long it's going to take until I reach the ground from where I started, you know, the throw. So that's over here. So it's going to take uh, 3.24 seconds. That's my answer. So, you know, part one was finding the vertex. Part two was basically solving a quadratic equation. Okay, so let's see what, um, <coughs> excuse me, let's see what part three uh, wants us to do. At what times will the rocket be at a height of 22 yards? Time, right? I want my t again. So, um, and I'm given my height. At what times? Will the rocket be a, at a height of 22? So I want my t when h is 22. I can't really see that. Let me see if I can make that a little better. I um, want my time when the height is equal to <laughs> 22 yards. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm setting h equal to 22, and I want the time. So let's write that out. Negative 5t squared plus 10t um, plus, oops, plus 20 is equal to, oops, <laughs> plus 20 equals 22. So I have a quadratic equation again. Um... <laughs> which I should get two solutions. And let's see, you know, would I expect two solutions, you know? 25 yards is the maximum height. 
22 is a little bit less than that, right? 22 yards is a little bit less of a height. So, you know, I'm expecting a solution uh, yeah, from right, right here and here. 22 yards, I'm going to have one, in, you know, a little bit before 25 yards and a little bit after it. So I'm expecting a little less than one second and a little greater than one second. All right, let's see what we get. Um, let's set it equal to zero. Negative 5t squared plus 10t minus 2. 20 minus 22 is negative 2 equals zero. And looking at this, you know, you could play with it and see if it factors, but I know it's not going to factor. Um, and then again, I want to lead with a positive number, so I'm going to, you know, multiply by negative 1, change all my signs, and then, uh, you know, I, I could look at it and see it's not going to factor. So I'm going to, again, go into my quadratic formula. Not a big deal. We've done it, I don't know how many times. So let's do t equals the opposite of b. Opposite of negative 10, positive 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a, which is 5. And then simplify. 10 plus or minus the square root of 100, 4 times 5 is 20, times 2 is 40, all over 10. So I get 10 plus or minus the square root of 60, all over 10. Can I simplify 60, 60, yeah. Ten, so 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 15, all over 10. And um, everything's divisible by 2. So I get 5 plus or minus square root of 15, all over 5. This is my answer. One of them is 5 minus the square root of 15 over 5, and one of them is 5 plus the square root of 15 over 5. And again, I want the decimal version of these because I want the actual time that it's going to take to reach those values. And I'm expecting two solutions to make sense for this situation. So if I do 5 minus the square root of 15 over 5, what do I get? Let's see what I get. Approximately 0 0.23 seconds, which sounds about right because I expected less than one second. And then 5 plus the square root of 15 over 5 gives me approximately 1.77 seconds, which I expected because it's a little bit greater than one second, right? It took one second. I expected two solutions, right, here and here. It took one second to reach that maximum height of 25 yards. So I'm expecting a little less time to get to 22, which was 0.23 seconds, and then a little bit more than one second, to get to the second uh, situation. So that was the first one. And then the second one, the second uh, time, a little bit more than one second, was 1.77 seconds. So not a big deal, you know. When you deal with these kind of situations, you're really just, you know, it's all about the vertex and solving quadratics, okay? So it's just a matter of determining, oops, it's just a matter of determining what they're asking you to do.